Okay, welcome to this new video. It's going to be a little bit generic. I'm going to talk about the main divisions for the books of the Old Testament. But I think it's going to be interesting, especially if you are not very familiar with this subject. The first five books of the Old Testament are Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers and Deuteronomy. These five combined are usually called the Pentateuch. Jews traditionally call the Pentateuch the Torah. And Torah can be spelled in different ways. It can be spelled with an H at the end or a TH at the beginning. It also depends on which language you're reading it in. But it all basically sounds the same, namely Torah. As for the meaning of Pentateuch and Torah, Penta comes from the Greek word for five and Chuk means, well, I'm not entirely sure of what it means, but it, mean, it means something like things. So it's the five things. And the word Torah means law, but it can also be understood as being instruction. So, some scholars would say that the first four books have more in common with each other than they have with the book of Deuteronomy. And they would take the book of Deuteronomy out of the Pentateuch and they would call it the Tetratuch, or Tetratuch, which means, of course, the four things. Other scholars would like to include the book of Joshua into the whole, and then they would call it the Hexatoic. However, I won't be dealing with this all that much right now. I will just be talking about the Pentateuch. Another interesting thing is that these five books are sometimes also called the five books of Moses. For example, if you go to Germany, you get the German Bible. It won't be called Genesis through Deuteronomy, but they will be called 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th and 5th Moses. Then we go to the second part of the Hebrew Bible, and it starts with Joshua and Judges. Then we get the book of Ruth, which is slightly different in, in the way it's presenting itself. It doesn't really fit in, although it does fit in with the timeline. It doesn't fit in with the style and character of the books. Then we go on with 1st and 2nd Samuel and 1st and 2nd Kings. The book of Ruth I've given a different color just to make sure and the four orange books or actually the six orange books together are often called the Deuteronomistic History. That is because they have a lot of things in common with the book of Deuteronomy and together they form a coherent story all the way from the taking of the land under the leading of Joshua to the exile. The next group of books is the first and second book of Chronicles followed by Ezra and Nehemiah. These books have a lot of things in common with each other and are often called the chronistic history, named after the first books in this list, namely the book of Chronicles. They overlap a lot in time with the books of Samuel and Kings, especially Kings, and they deal with the period of history from the kingship of David all the way to the return from the exile and the rebuilding of the temple and the walls around Jerusalem. Next we have the book of Esther, which is a bit of a standalone. It doesn't really connect a lot in style or in content, with any of the other books. It is placed in time in during the exile or actually shortly after. Therefore it is placed at the end of the history books after the book of Nehemiah. The next thing we do is go on to a different type of books, namely the poetic books. The first one is Job, the second one is the Psalms, the third one is Proverbs, then we go on to Ecclesiastes and finally we have Song of Songs, sometimes also called the Song of Solomon. They contain poetry, songs, wisdom sayings and even erotic poetry. Next we go to the last big chunk of the Hebrew Bible and those are the prophets. We first start with the book of Isaiah then the book of Jeremiah and as an appendix we have the book of Lamentations. It's not really part of the prophets but it's placed there because it's usually associated with the prophet Jeremiah and then we go on with Ezekiel. Now these three Isaiah, Jeremiah and Ezekiel are called the major prophets because their books are quite big. Next up we have the book of Daniel. Technically speaking this is not really a prophet. It's actually an apocalyptic vision, but it's placed here for convenience, I think. And finally we have the Minor Prophets. These are called Minor Prophets because their books are quite a, quite a bit smaller than the books of the Major Prophets. For example, Isaiah has 66 chapters, all the way to Ezekiel having 48 chapters. But the biggest one here would be Hosea. The first one has 14 chapters, so that's quite a lot smaller. Next we have Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk. Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah and Malachi. Now, I may be mispronouncing a few of these because the pronunciation in English is quite a bit different at some points than it is from the Dutch, but uh, hopefully you will get the gist. For those of you who can count, these are exactly 12 minor prophets. This is probably not by accident because the number 12 has quite a lot of symbolic value because there are 12 tribes of Israel and sometimes it's also called the Book of the Twelve, that is the Book of the Twelve Minor Prophets. So there you have it folks, first the five books of Moses or the Pentateuch, next on we have the Deuteronomistic history with the book of Ruth as an odd one out, then we go on to the Chronistic history, the book of Esther which doesn't really belong anywhere else, the poetic writings, 
the major prophets with as odd ones out the book of lamentations and the book of daniel and you have the minor prophets and that's the end of this video and see you in the next video once it comes out